All right, all right. Hello, everybody over in the universe, the interwebs, social media, etc. Name's Chris, and I'm here with very dear guest, a good buddy of mine. We met only once in person, but it feels like we've known each other for years. Mr. Claude Diamond. Claude, how you doing? From I, one I, Jersey boy to another. I'm doing okay. You know what I'm saying here? You know, everything. I know what you're saying, man. I know what you're Hey, I know how it goes. <laughs> I'm in California. I'm in beautiful San Diego. Oh, excuse me for one second. I just got to take care of something. Uh, yeah. honey, honey, could you turn up the air conditioner? Uh, oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So that's a <laughs> pretty good barb. It's actually, as of the recording of this, it's uh, we're a couple days into uh, uh, spring in New Jersey over here on the East coast. And I think we've been hit by two snowstorms still. Spring really? In New Jersey. I get a vision of Chris Christie on a speedo on the beach somewhere. Uh, right? uh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about that fella. <laughs> you got a good, not governor. around these parts. You have a new governor right now. We do. Yeah. We do. He, we he do. never met a tax that he didn't like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. Just what Jersey needed, more taxes. Yeah, because the cost of living is, yeah, you, know, you know, like it's like living in uh, in Costa Rica, you know, like with oh, a man. like just a thousand like, bucks, you have a, a nineteen room mansion. Yeah, just sure. getting across the GW or the Lincoln Tunnel now, and then yeah. trying to go to a JFK Airport and taking the Queens Midtown Tunnel uh -huh. and or the or whatever. Well, it, what is it like thirty five dollars just to get to the airport and toll? It's a part time airport? job. Yeah, it's a part timer. Wow, yeah. wow, that's that's crazy. All that's those terrible. Guys. You know, and here in Coronado, we the bridge was paid for, and guess what they did? This is pure Cal. This is one of the reasons I have a love hate with California. This is one of the What's love. That? They What's took that? down the toll booth. Oh. We have a beautiful suspension bridge to Coronado yeah. Island. They actually took down the toll booth. It was it was paid for. It's the People's Bridge. Why keep taxing them for it? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Joe. Let's not get political. No, nope, no, nope, not at all. Because we got to make sure that we're we're inclusive, kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know, whatever. Someone's bound to be upset. So, yeah. bye. But for those still tuning in, uh, Claude, Mr. Claude Diamond, on here. I actually first ran into Claude Diamond uh, through your, your Periscope videos, believe it or not. Yeah. And for a good while, I was watching and all. I was like, man, this guy is communicating like no one else out there in regards to real estate. And for me to be blatantly honest, and I'm going to use a uh, little bit. Don't be honest. Don't start. No. Don't start now. <laughs> so for me to be blatantly honest, starting for the first time ever, and also to use some brown privilege. Real estate normally for me as a young millennial, okay, is mostly a bunch of old, boring white guys talking like a bunch of spreadsheets and numbers that put me to sleep. I'm an old, boring white guy. Wait a second. No, you're, uh, you're, man, you're a bowl of Skittles and then some. You love your beer. You love your pizza. You party. You have beautiful hair. You're, I mean, like, you're practically, you know, like a Latino like me. So, like, you're in the club. So, don't worry about that. So, <laughs> Claude Diamante. So when listening to Claude, like I just couldn't stop listening to your periscopes and I just went through the older ones and I eventually discovered your YouTube's uh, videos and how you actually help lots of people. Yeah. And we actually met finally uh, mm -hmm. last year in 2017 in uh, lovely San Diego, your backyard. That's right? right. Yeah. Yeah. And like we had a blast Daniel, over there, Daniel you know? and Ray, at Daniel and Ray's seminar in uh, Mission Beach. Daniel Yoffe, yeah, yeah. And I've uh, definitely been uh, hoping for at some point to to reconnect, and uh, like we will from from time to time, but not face to face like this. So what I really wanted to do was actually like shine more light on you, on your magnificence. So that hopefully other people, whether they're seasoned or beginners in real estate, Honey, actually can learn a, a few things from you. You called me your magnificent. Magnificent. Okay. She, I just want to make sure she's listening. <laughs> it's recorded, so I'm sure she'll uh, get the replay, no problem. Right? So, yes. We tell are. us, Mr. Diamond, Claude, my BFF, Mr. Diamante, who the heck are you? And why should real estate investors who have experience or don't give a hoot? You know, maybe they shouldn't give a hoot. Maybe they shouldn't listen to me. I'm not the last word on anything. Um, I, I try to teach. I try to keep it so real. 
uh, I love this business. It's given my wife and I the, the one thing that we all want, freedom. Freedom mm -hmm. from worry about money and, and bills and just freedom to live life like normal people. We don't need Lamborghinis in the garage or anything, but we live comfortably. We're really happy. Shout out to Ty Lopez. How you doing? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there he is. I don't need that. I got a nice le – I lease my cars anyway. Uh, yeah. The, the thing about it is I grew up in New York City, no kidding, um, in Manhattan. Um, my parents were immigrants, you know. Uh, the whole family had to work in dad's little grocery store in Delhi. Uh, it, it was okay. I was the delivery boy. I, I could slice bologna, and I've got the scars on my hand to prove it at seven years old. And um, then we, he sold the business. Um, we moved to New Jersey uh, to improve my elocution. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, I was, you know, went to, I went to, uh, I lived in Hopacon, New Jersey, I think, exit 28 mm -hmm. off Route 80. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in New Jersey, we gave exit right. the location device. That's our yeah. location device. And, um, you know, I went to a, a two-year college because didn't have a lot of money. So I went to a two-year college. Then I went to Stockton State College in uh, outside Atlantic City. Uh, went to law school uh, here in California. Uh, met my uh, my wife uh, uh, 32 years. We just celebrated our anniversary. Hmm. I want I want to hear from a good job, good job, good okay. job. If you can hear, yeah. And How many years? 32 years, but we've known each other. Oh my God, we knew each other in 40. We went to the prom together and stuff like that. High school sweethearts, nice. Oh yeah, yeah. All kinds of good stuff. Oh wow. And just very corny, but really real. And. Uh, I uh, did my first real estate deal. I got real estate fever, as I like to say. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, we've all got, I read books by Robert Allen and, and, and Chris Nickerson and a lot of these, all, um, and Mark, um, oh, I forgot his name. He used to write the Financial Freedom Report. I read all these real estate books and some of the same gurus when I was a kid, uh, when I was your age, they were, they're still around today, these guys. And the, my thing is, they gave you enough information to be dangerous, usually. They gave you a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration, but very little education. And I, so I went out there, I worked hard, and, and I did all the things they said. And then, man, I was like, the, the money was going down, the credit card bills were going up. Um, I, I did some real estate deals, but you know, after a while, it just wasn't working for me. It was very frustrating. It's a very tough business. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of strategies to use. You, you know, making, having money doesn't hurt and good credit. And eventually you, even a guy who has that can run out. Um, and I did one really, and I did one really smart thing uh, in my life besides marrying my lovely girlfriend. Um, I met a gentleman who in New Jersey, Max, I've written a couple books about him. The mentor teaches success. The mentor teaches the gut sales method. And this guy was one of those, you remember Reader's Digest, they used to have an article called the most unique person I ever met, the unique character I ever met. That was Max. Max would pick up the phone and do real estate deals in one phone call. Um, he would get commitments, he would get contracts, he would get appointments, or he would fire the prospect. He was not subservient, he was not a beggar, he didn't give long-winded presentations, and he and he didn't use scripts or anything. He was just this spontaneous, mm -hmm. bigger than life, outgoing personality. Max was short for Maximilian. Even his name was powerful. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, law school, business college, seminars, books, gurus, all the stuff. And everything I learned about success was from this little old man um, who did real estate unlike anybody I've ever did. He, he specialized in uh, lease options, lease purchasing, my favorite strategy to this day. Um, and the really unique thing I took from him was self-esteem, confidence, and giving, as the sign says behind me, giving good phone. How to, I was a shy kid. You can ask my wife. You know, I used to write notes down before we'd go out on dates. I needed talking points, okay? Do you like me? Circle yes or no. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, but I learned from this guy that I could flip a switch, I could be confident, I could be outgoing, I could ask questions, I had rights in the sales process. And within six months, I, I was out of debt. And within one year, I left my corporate job. Um, and I, I was free. I, I did what I love working from home. I like talking to people. I love negotiating deals, finding deals. 
And, you know, it's, it's, that, it's, it's the one thing that none of the gurus, sorry for this long answer, um, but it's the one thing that I, I cannot believe all these very expensive gurus and programs out there, even the well-meaning ones, mm-hmm. do not teach. They seem so old school and scripted and boring. Oh, oh my God. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cure for insomnia. Sorry. And they're very expensive. And they do everything except to teach people grassroots, kitchen, table, real estate. Picking yep. up that phone and talking to nice people and learning how to control the conversation, get the information, make offers, follow up, and live happily ever after like we did. And they don't teach this stuff. They, they teach a lot of automated stuff, a lot of technology, which I love. But, sure. they, but they left out the most important part. Yeah. The What's that? The conversion, the community, mm-hmm. the why, why do people, why would someone do business with me? A little guy from New Jersey, um, I don't have a big office building, I don't have a staff of 500 people, I don't have an expensive marketing campaign, but Claudia and I run a multi million dollar business. Why? Mm. Why is that, Claude? I'm curious. Because I'm not scared to pick up the phone and talk to people. I use social media marketing, yeah. I attract quality, not quantity. I attract quality leads every day into my business. Mm-hmm. And I talk to wonderful people all over the U.S., all over the world. Do I close everybody? No way. No. no way. But I close enough. Yeah. I One thing that I wanted to, to, to say real quick before I forget, Claude, it's some, some good things that you're saying, is uh, the part that you said, hey, don't get me wrong, I like technology. And the thing about technology is that sometimes there's a shelf life on this stuff. It's not going to last forever. I mean, uh, common platforms right now like um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, there's Instagram, Snapchat. They're hot right now. They've been around right now. But who's to say 10 years from now they don't go the way of MySpace or AOL chat rooms, for example, right? So it's it really is in a person's best interest to do something that's evergreen, that has no shelf life. Like yeah. for example, what your backdrop says, give good phone. Because if the internet were to collapse right now, guess what? But the phone lines are still good. As long as y- you can do that, you're good. Hey, you remember, you're in New Jersey. I know yeah. you remember Hurricane Sandy, right? You're darn right I do. Okay, I have in every house, I have several houses. I live in California, Colorado, and I spend time in uh, North Carolina. I have landlines wherever I live, wherever my homes are. Because when you, my brother lives in New Jersey. And you know what? When Sandy hit, cell phones were out, um, cable TV was out, um, everything was out except one old school ang- analog device. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah. the, good old, the good old landline. It still worked. Yeah. And so you, gotta have, you cannot, you, your, your, your technology cannot replace a hug from your mother. No. Okay. There are some things that are nurturing, that are earthy. When someone does real, real estate is the biggest investment for most people's lives, whether they're buying, selling, or investing. Sooner or later, the fax, the email, the text, the yellow letters, the blog, the telemarketers in third world countries, that person is going to want to talk to someone real. Yep. All day. Now, All day. how did you get so darn good at it, though? Because <laughs> I've heard, seen your periscopes and, like, I've heard your videos and sometimes where you're walking through students with, like, live phone calls. And, man, like, I was like, this guy has a pair of – I'm like, whoa. I mean, like, I mean, like how did yeah, you finally, like, home, break that – uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean – yeah, like, how did it happen? Um, you're talking, can I use bad language on this broadcast? Uh, PG-13, if possible. I'll keep it family friendly. In case mom watches, you never okay, know. Okay, okay. Um, I, um, I've made more mistakes than any man alive in this mm-hmm. business. And the thing is, one of the, one of the personality traits of entre- true entrepreneurs is to take the mistakes and say, okay, I learned something. I'm smarter now. I'm not yeah. going to make that mistake again. And even though you beat me down, I lost money. I embarrassed myself. My pants fell around my ankles in the shopping mall in front of Santa Claus at Christmas time. Even though all that happened, I'm still going to move forward. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take what I learned and move forward. And what you have to be is your own cheerleader in life. You have to be, 
you have to talk to yourself. You know, people think you're crazy. It's okay. But <laughs> the older you get, the more you do that, by the way. Oh, it's true. <laughs> and I like, feel so much more shameless. Like I know for some people, oh, Chris, like you're a baby. I'm you know, like, I hate saying it, but I'm 35 right now. I got but boxer like, shorts older than you. Compare, yeah, probably. Compared to knowing you, how frugal you are. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But I mean, like I'm thinking of myself at like 26 talking to people the way I do now, I would never, but there's been a point in which now I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I don't, life is short. Exactly. Most of this stuff in this universe is meaningless. Exactly. What are you going to do? We're small specks on a rock in this vast universe. Eh, whatever. There's a wonderful word we have on the East coast. What is that? New York and New- it's called chutzpah. You got chutzpah. <laughs> yeah. Chutzpah, chutzpah. Mean, chutzpah means it unmitigated gall to that tenth power. Okay, yeah. it means you do stuff, you try stuff, and if it doesn't work, you ask for more and you do more. Okay, mm-hmm. you just keep tr- you keep doing. You know who my hero is, right? I've said this on a lot of videos. No, I can't Pope, remember. Him. Popeye the Sailor Man. I am who I am, and that's all who I'll ever be. Or is something. that the greatest existentialist philosopher of our time? I am. Yeah. And that's all who I am. I just got to be happy. But my daughter gave me, I say this also, my daughter years ago gave me one of the greatest compliments I've ever had in my life. She said, Dad, you're mm-hmm. just comfortable in your own skin. And we have to get that confidence. People love confidence. And even inside, here's the truth of every, can I, can I tell the truth or should I? Keep, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. Deep, deep inside, there's a little boy with a blanket over his head like Linus, okay? And he's, yeah. scared, and he's scared to death but he's even more scared of being a failure. Mm. And so he'll do crazy stuff. He'll reinvent himself. He'll flip the switch and say, you know, let me try. They may laugh at me. I may embarrass myself, or maybe I'll do a deal. Maybe I'll make some money. Maybe somebody will like me or trust me. I've got to re I've got to flip that switch. One thing that I've done, Claude, like, and I want to know your thoughts on this for me. What I mean, naturally I am a very introverted person and there's people that don't believe it, but like, according to my personality profile it's called INFJ, they call us like uh, chameleons. And one thing that I've done is like try to camouflage myself or take on may sound a bit crazy, like an alter ego of sorts in which now this particular version of Chris, he'll actually like tell people like off if need be, he'll get into back and forth fearlessly He'll use like dry wit, a little bit of smarminess, a little bit of sarcasm. Like, yeah, you know, so yeah, uh, you know, that stuff. And, you know, it feels so good for me, at least. Like for me, it works. But sometimes, like, I'll go from the alter ego of the fearless communicator by phone, the boiler room type, the Grant Cardone, and then I'll end up putting on my therapist hat. And then I'll put on my uh, uh, compassionate, oh, I'm so loving to the elderly, which I am, I hope, you know, type hat. I mean, what do you think of being able to kind of split your ego, your mindset in that way? You have to, you have to, you have to be your own. I'll say it again. You got to be your own cheerleader in life. People yeah. love confidence. They love energy. They want to work. Remember the opening of Patton, the big movie with George C. Scott, and he walks out with the, yeah. general, with the American flag. And he says this most brilliant thing. He says, mm-hmm. Americans love a winner and will not tolerate a loser. You have to act, sound, and learn how to, what does a winner sound like? Yeah. And I don't mean to be a big braggart or, oh, look at my Cadillac, look at my jet. I, I got a little problem with some of that stuff too. It just sounds like bragging a lot to me. But, yeah, but the self-serving. Thing, it is self-serving. I'm, you know, what people who are selling things have to sell the lifestyle too, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that i've always you want to there's a place i it's i call it idgasl what I does that acronym stand for i don't give a s okay <laughs> l land yeah. i don't give an s land and it's where you get to a place yeah where you're just comfortable who you are you know that chris is a good man a hard-working man a decent man he takes care of his family he's honest uh, you know, he, he he doesn't have to be Claude Diamond or Grant Cardone or Gary Vane. He doesn't have to be no. anybody except Chris. Yep. And when you get there and you can communicate to people, whether you're in real estate or you sell dental floss, mm-hmm. okay, people people love that energy and they they want that um, that confidence, that personality. Yeah. 
They don't want someone who says, who reads the script, who begs for the orders, and gives the same boring presentation in the very beginning. Hi there, hi there Chris. I'm just reaching out to you today. I, you know, I wanted to talk to you about wholesale real estate. Isn't that wonderful? And right yeah. away, what does that prospect think? Yes. Uh, you seem a little bit snake oily. So, right. It's already yeah. putting up the, def the force field, the Star Trek force field. Yeah. Okay. What I found, Claude, is that when I actually have done the things that, that you're speaking of right now, whether it's the prospects or, or like even cash investors or whomever else, like I'll note that they actually seem to show more respect at the fact that I'm standing my ground and not always trying to people please and just be like a yes man that there's there's more there's more honor like even more respect given to me and you increase the likelihood of you being seen as a peer as an equal even if the other person has a decade or two decades more experience and deeper wallets or more resources than you what do you say to that i say if you if you went to a doctor and that doctor said you know chris i I think we can save your arm. I've never done this surgery before. I, I read about it in a book once. I'll try my best, uh, Chris. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll see what I can. I'll do the whatever. Do you want that doctor to operate on your arm? No, sir. No. People want assertiveness. See, we've, we've come to where we believe assertiveness mm -hmm. is a dirty word. It's not. Mm -hmm. Not being bullying people, not trying to intimidate or, mani or manipulate them, but we can say one of my favorite lines to people is, "Chris, do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you the truth, or or or, or tell you a story, or tell you a fairy tale?" Can you oh, I've me? actually used that before. Yeah, <laughs> Thank one you. One of for my that. favorite catch lines. Can you? Can I tell you the truth, Chris? You promise you won't get mad no. at me. You're making a horrible mistake, Chris. And please, and you can, and we don't have to do business. It's okay. But I, I if. If I didn't tell you this, I'd feel bad. And I don't want to get off the phone with you. And then you have regrets because I didn't say the right thing. You're making mm -hmm. a mistake. We need to put this property on the market now. We can get a good price for it. And we can, I can take care of this. And I can probably move this property in the next 30 days or less. Or you can say no to me. And I will thank you for your time. And I will leave right now. What would you like to do? Uh, the first one. Which is? Uh, slap, slap me with the truth, but don't kiss me with a lie. I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you an offer right now. I'm going to make you two offers: one for cash and one for a lease purchase term. And I'll send that to you right now. I'll put it in DocuSign or a letter of intent. I'll attach a video summarizing our discussion. And if you and your lovely bride could get back to me at 10 o'clock tomorrow on Zoom video or Skype, and we can figure out whether we should move forward, or you can just fire me, and we're done. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fine. I hope you don't mind me being so abrupt and direct. It's just my nature. No, I'm actually thankful for it, and Claude. And you know, like I talk to all these uh, real estate guys, and they're just low balling, and like they're not upfront sometimes. I think they're trying to like hide something from me. Exactly. I tend to be direct. I am the only salesperson. I'm a sales trainer today. I'm I'm a, I'm a real estate investor, and I teach lease purchasing. And but I, my real passion is the gut sales method, and I really just want to teach people. That sales can be fun. It, we can blend the uh, our knowledge of psychology, uh, human behavior, how to ask questions the right way, and we can, we also can be a little bit of an actor and play a role. My alma mater is the University of Fake It Until You Make It, mm -hmm. okay? and that upsets some people also. But yeah. my thing is, can I speak to enough people all day long comfortably? At least five. If yeah. I can talk to five people a day, and I don't mean make five phone calls. I get, I hear some, some no. guru nonsense we were talking about earlier where they, exactly. Oh, I made a thousand calls this week. That's BS. They didn't make yeah. a thousand calls. They had a telemarketer, a virtual assistant or some automatic machine that may be illegal by the way, under FCC laws. Okay. I don't want to, I don't need numbers. I need quality. Yes. If I can attract enough quality appointments, people call me. I virtually attract them through social media and live streaming and videos and everything else. People contact me. They set appointments. They text me. They email me. They call me spontaneously. They go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, and they set a point. Anybody can set a free 15-minute appointment with me. And if I speak to it and they bring me deals, they become clients, they buy my product packages, they retain me for mentoring and gut sales. All I need to do is speak to enough people and they're gonna say, this is a good guy.
maybe this is the guy, maybe this is the guy that can shorten the learning curve and he's willing to be accountable or maybe he's the wrong guy or I can't afford him or whatever. That's okay. Yeah. Too. I don't need the whole world. I just need a little sliver of the pie. That's all you need. Just a piece, not the whole pie. Now you've been around for a while. Why don't you think Claude that other people are like doing or like preaching what you're preaching and you know, they're, they're probably not nearly as good either. A lot of work involved in what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, my business is very small. It's very low overhead. It's very high profit. And it's based on a great deal of accountability. Um, I, we, uh, you know, one of my catchphrases or mottos is, call us. We answer our own phone. I answer my own phone. I can't answer every phone call, but I always return calls. Anybody can set an appointment with me. I'm trying to create something unique in the marketplace, accountability. Yeah. If I, if I can work one-on-one -on -one with people and practice with them how to give good phone, make live phone calls, how to negotiate a deal with somebody on the phone, their, their comfort level, their confidence is going to rise because now they are learning the gut smith system because we're mm -hmm. doing it hands-on. Most of my competition, and I'm not going to badmouth them or anything, they're good people and everything, their methodology sure. is volume. Let's get a thousand people in the Holiday Inn with bad coffee and stale donuts. Let's get the guy with the little red tie and the black suit jumping up and down, making a couple yep. of and and telling motivation stories how John and Mary got rich. Yep. And then the first twenty people to the back of the room. Are they still doing that, Chris? Uh, yes. In fact, but I think they've been generous to increase the number from twenty to now about twenty-five. Okay. The yep. the thing people have to ask themselves is. Do these people care about me? Will they answer my own? Well, the guy who was on the front. Will he answer the phone? Will he talk to me or will he hire or will I get, end up just listening to old recordings and speaking to somebody in a group call who's getting yeah. paid $20 an hour? Why would he work for somebody for $20 an hour if he had the knowledge experience to be an independent millionaire? I, I don't get it. I'm so fascinated that you're saying this because I actually was uh, talking to a few people about um, – about me actually like coaching them like and I've told them that I feel humbled because I know that there's folks like you out there Claude and I'm like saying to myself if you were to ever say man I'm gonna go with Claude Diamond uh, sorry Chris no don't I don't blame you. just like go ahead that's fine but what I've told people is that you know you're investing not just in some information no you're investing in the following okay guys I'm going to uh, have to cut short family dinner. I've got a call in about five minutes, okay? I'll be right back. I'm sorry, little Tristan. Like, I only have about 10 minutes for your bedtime story, okay? Like, and then you don't have to fall asleep because I have a, a video coaching call to do. You're not paying for information. You're paying for me to do that so that I can make sure that you can provide all you want for your family. Yeah. Okay? So that's what you're getting. It's called accountability. I yeah. love my call. I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I am doing exactly what I should be doing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working with wonderful people in 18 different countries. I, am, I get paid very well for what I do. Um, you know, we are debt-free, mortgage-free, uh, mm -hmm. good health care, everything, uh, everything that you could do to live in this wonderful country well. And, yeah. and I did it by giving good phone. I, I, I get to work with people who uh, I want to help and who are in kind to me. And then they do the best thing in the world for a teacher or mentor. One of my students um, last week, he did two deals and he made a hundred thousand dollars on two separate deals. This is a man I just started working with, I think about three months ago at the most. Yeah. I'm totally not jealous. Okay. Think, continue. Yeah. And it's, and <laughs> when I hear this, man, I'm two feet above the ground. I love this because I can't take money from people unless I hear success. Mm-hmm. I just, I just need that. And I, and, and should we tell the truth or should we tell a fairy tale about the, a lot of these gurus and programs? The, you know, Go for it. Mm -hmm. I think the failure rate based on my research and study, the failure rate is in the, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's horrible. It's in the nineties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's 95. The, the failure rate on a lot of these expensive programs is, is just horrible. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I can't do that. I've got to see my students succeed. At least mm -hmm. make back what they paid me and make more and have freedom and have confidence and move on. 
So yes. I'm going to share with them all the stupid things I've done, all my mistakes. I'm going to share with them the smart things I've done. And I'm going to, sh so that they don't have to wait 10, 20, 30 years before they get, get it. I want, my job is to shorten the learning curve so that they do what I'm doing right now. They, they also can do it right now. Some people are going to absorb that and listen and practice and keep meetings with me and learn how to give good phone. Some people might ignore it. Mm -hmm. oh, Once you've shortened that learning curve for them and now they get it, what, what do you say that, that people should do now to, to scale and grow their business? Um, do they, when, when you say that though, do they, do they really have to, uh, we're getting back to technology and stuff, right? No, I, I don't know. Okay. When you say scale their business, what, I'm one guy, I think one person on a kitchen table with screaming fast Wi-Fi and some good co and computer equipment, an iPhone, an iPad, a good laptop, I think that's as scalable as they need. How much money? Mm, do you interesting. Really, okay. How much money do you really need before you? Oh, low overhead, high profit is the American dream. It's entrepreneurism. I don't the have the best to way to, to not go out of business. A lot of businesses go under because of uh, too high an overhead of costs. Do you know yeah. how many people I've met? I'll, I'll give you a story. I know a, I know a lady down south. She spent 18000 Guru told her, spent $18,000 on mailers. She, he gave her a mailer, which was a copy of a copy of a yellow letter. He, got, he helped her find a blind mail list, not people who know her or she attracted, just a list she bought and she mailed and postage and labor and everything. And she mailed $18,000. Okay. She did not make that 18000 back. The ROI on some of the advice people are getting is, a tr is horrible. It's old. A lot of, the, you know what really surprises me, Chris? A lot of these exactly. so-called modern gurus, they're teaching old fashioned. They're still teaching using the post office for God's sakes. That's crazy. And when we have all this great social media, all I got to do is what we're doing right now, putting out live content, yeah. um, putting out, inf I put out more, I put out better free information than what my competition charges. Yeah. I put out videos every week and form some good them. stuff. Yeah. I put it out. Why? Because I'm a secret. No one woke up this morning and said, Oh, let me call up Claude Diamond. They don't know who I am. Okay. I'd love them to know, but I, they're not. So, but if I put out enough good free content and they say, Hey, I like this guy. Let me watch some other videos. Oh, let me check him out. Let me Google him. Oh, look, he's on Facebook. He's got some other stuff there. Oh, let me go to his webpage. Oh, look, a free book. Uh, oh, a free 15-minute conversation. Let me see if he really answers his own phone. Let me talk to him, ask him questions. See, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm breaking through. I'm becoming – you cannot just go and take the prospect for granted today. No. You've got to earn it. You've got to earn their trust by the, con by the quality of the compelling content that you put out every day. Yeah. That's what do you think is uh, missing from, from real estate then? You know, I mean, yeah. there's – so much, and it always seems that like there's something new being added, but there's something missing. I don't know if you concur with that. Something missing in terms of marketing in real estate? Uh, you know, like I'd probably say as far as marketing slash sales, and if you want to throw in um, education, that too. Okay. Here's the thing. If everybody's doing the same thing, they're using the same words, the same language, uh, the same marketing materials, the same scripted present or a premature presentation. Yeah. What's going to differ? We're in a competitive world. And if everybody is, are just clones, they're just rabbiting each other. They're copying each other. Yeah. What makes you unique? Well, I want, when I get off the phone with somebody, what it, my goal is to have them say, you know what? That was a good conversation. I like Claude. I feel good about him. Maybe he's the, maybe he's the straight guy in an unstraight world. Maybe he's a guy. Who can help us buy a home, sell a home, invest in a home? Maybe yeah. this is the right guy. You know what? I'm not the biggest person. I'm not the biggest uh, 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 real estate person in, in the business. I don't have uh, giant offices and, and things like that. I'm a guy who works out of his lovely homes in different parts of the country. I don't need that kind of, I don't need the bling if people perceive me as giving them quality. Right. And, and that's what I shoot. That's what I shoot for. I don't need a lot of people. I just need a few every, every day, every week, every month uh, that I can do deals with, or I can take into my training program. That's part of my business too. 
And those people say, hey, this is a guy, maybe, maybe this is the answer. Maybe this is better than, you know, the average person I speak to Chris, has spent close to $100,000 in educational um, guru programs. I didn't know that. But, but I mean, like what you're saying, though, it makes sense is, I mean, do you really need super, super high volume and all of these bells and whistles and more? And how do you know a guru is lying? Yeah. Their lips are moving. Oh, I, <laughs> I hear this all the time on podcasts and stuff. Oh, I did a hundred deals last week and, uh, you know, we're going to crush it and do another 400 before, uh, uh, for next week and everything. That's such I question things. Maybe it's just That's hard. Uh, it's a, I know how hard it is to do a deal. By the way, we don't have to do a lot of deals. You can make you can make a year's income on one good real estate deal. And the thing is, is that what I'm finding, Claude, is that um, some people think that they need to make $10 million. Like I've had people fill out questionnaire forms to me and say that their goal is to do $100,000 per month, yada, yada. All right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing 1.2 million per year. Well, sure. I, I hope you do more. And then uh, upon speaking with them and finding out why and what they really want in life, they'll eventually themselves without me persuading them, they'll say, well, you know what? I think even like just with 10,000 a month or even like with 15,000 a month, I'm fine. Like, so it's like we went from a hundred thousand dollars per month to now like maybe 15% of that, maybe sometimes about 20% of that. And it's like, okay, so you're about maybe two to four deals per month, assuming you're doing lease options or wholesaling, whatever the case may be. You don't need to do you're a high buy. When Claudia and I no. first got started, we moved to California. Okay. And or I'm just one like really big one, like per month. Yeah. yeah. I, went, I went to, I'm in law school really hard, you know, 80 hours of study and stuff. Um, uh, we're a young married couple. We have a new baby. Claudia is working a job. She's in the medical field. Okay. Um, and we're both working really, getting really tired with the new baby and everything like that. But I still had my hand in real estate. And all I wanted to make was that extra thousand dollars a month. Okay. That's that extra thousand. It was like the, oh my God, it would give us a little breathing room, you know, right now the money was, you know, we were watching every penny. And I, cause I know where people come from and we got, I got to that thousand and then I got done with law school and then I started revving up and I, I still, I had this love for real estate and I started, and the business started growing at 2,500 a month, 5,000 a month, got to 10,000 mm -hmm. a month. And I remember Claudia saying, you're making a lot of money, <laughs> you know? And I said, yeah. And, uh, you know, and she was able to leave her job and stay home with uh, my kids and homeschool and, and do the things that were, and we were able to travel with the kids and, and do everything. The business is so portable and so wonderful. And the business is still growing to this day. Yeah. And it's so consistent. The income is so wonderfully consistent. And we, we, and our big, our big goal was just to pay our bills, be out and not be in and not ever get in debt. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that's, that's all we want. It's simple goals. So you, you've gone from just the basic simple goals to now Boom. how much per year? Like uh, a, lot, a lot. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, we're, uh, yeah. I, I, and that's just by doing like small things mm -hmm. many times, but you know, doing it very proficiently, doing it very well. Doing it well, innovating, finding new cash flow streams, not just doing real estate when we had extra money. I bought real estate. I mm -hmm. bought really good deals, uh, foreclosures, fixers, all the things that the gurus talk about. We owned prop we owned all these properties. Honey, how many deal properties did we own while we were still in an apartment? We have ten. We own ten properties all over yeah. San Diego, expensive area. We're yep. still in a little two-bedroom apartment. Oh wait, we moved from the two-bedroom to the three-bedroom. She's right. Okay. Okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> and then I finally said, I think we're making enough money on all these properties that we can finally buy our own home, and that's what we bought our own home. And you know, and we were willing to sacrifice, pay the price, live beneath our means. Um, a lot of that good old. Got to pay that price. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, not get in debt. Not um, maybe we gave up things that other people were buying, big screen TVs and 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 a lot of expensive vacations and holidays and stuff. We were willing. That was the sacrifice we were making as a young family. Um, 
so that uh, as we, you know, we're, we could be, uh, I can go to bed. To me, the definition of success is going to bed and not worrying about money. Oh. Have, have we all, oh. been, have we been there? Oh, man. You know, I've been there, man. Two in the morning, staring at the ceiling. How am I going to pay this rent? How am I going to yeah. pay this rent? It's, tell me, I wish I could curse. Um, it's my new <laughs> it, it's, it's the worst feeling in the world. Worst friggin' feeling. How about that? Okay, I'll, thank you. Thank you. There you go. There's your jersey for you. <laughs> um, and, you know, <laughs> the thing about sales that I learned from Max is once I have sales, and I, you could take everything. This is my definition of success. I talk about this all the time. You can yeah. take everything away from me. Houses, cars, savings, mm -hmm. everything. Strip me naked. Bad visual. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, I ran today. Um, okay. <laughs> get me to the phone. Keep me healthy. And I will, I will be a one percenter in 30 days or less. And when you can say yeah. that, it's, see, it's not about the accumulation of wealth. It's the ability to know you could lose it and make it back again. Oh, I love, yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, I like what you said there. Successful people. They, how many successful people, Steve Jobs, uh, there's so many who had unbelievable setbacks and failures. I mean, some have gone bankrupt, but they went right back. They went right back. Because they had, they, that had, factor. they had it here, they had the knowledge, and they had the heart. They had the character to say, and I am guts. somebody who can do guts, baby. Good name for a book. Good name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like, maybe I should come up like with a sales system called that. That would be there great. You go. Great. Untraditional, <laughs> unorthodox techniques of sales and success. Guts. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. last two questions uh, for, for you, Claude. Now, for the person that's got some flips under their belt, or maybe they're looking to do their first wholesale deal, or lease option, whatever the case may be, where would you direct them to now go? Like, what should be their next step? If, say, they um, want to definitely, like, get that first deal done, because a lot of people are scatterbrained, right? There's so much they're information overload. Too much. What would you say that would like make things like, oh, okay, that's it. All right, then I guess I'll just do what Claude say, what, uh, says. Like, like, yes. What would that be for you? Yeah, forget all. There's too much information out there. We're overwhelmed with all the media and everything that we have available. Mm -hmm. Find one strategy that's a benefit or get a real estate license. I tell a lot of people today, I didn't used to say this 20 years ago. I say immerse yourself in the field. Be in that environment. Learn the law. Learn contracts. Learn everything you can about real estate. That's a good, uh, good place to start. Yeah, um, definitely. Look, get a mentor who's real. Doesn't have to be me. I'm not trying to be yeah. self-serving. But find somebody who's doing it on. Go, Chris. <laughs> sure. Call up somebody who you know is accountable, who's doing yeah. this honestly, and who's not driving a used Yugo. Okay, success and failure always leave clues. Find I kind of resent that. I'm actually driving a '96 Saturn. But like you should see the part of town I go through sometimes for deals. So. <laughs> Listen, you, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business. Sometimes you need the right car for the right environment. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like being as inconspicuous and incognito as possible. Me, I like I, I drive a new Cadillac X, X, XT5. Whatever we lease yes. our cars, I'd be, mm -hmm. uh, I'd be uh, XJ or XT. 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 Oh, it's a sweet ride, baby. It's it's quiet. It's fast. It's got screaming engine, and I, it's my workplace because I have I now have Wi-Fi in my car. Yeah. Another forty-five dollars a month. Forty. Excuse me. See, I can't even lie. Forty dollars. All right. So that's like another four hundred and eighty dollars for you to hopefully add another forty-eight thousand. But that Wi-Fi has paid for itself for the next 15 years. I can't tell you. We just did a deal. Uh, was it last Tuesday or Wednesday on the way to the dentist? I did a deal in the car. I always yeah. – people can do video with me in the car. Just because cell service is kind of choppy sometimes. But Wi-Fi sometimes is a good backup. Mm -hmm. So you can do yeah. all the stuff you can do and you need to do. And so I even have that in my car. My car is my office. Somebody needs to get uh, – what you want to do is learn sales. It's uh, – that's yes. Important. Forget about all the strategies. Forget about all the expensive marketing. Forget about the scripts and templates. All that stuff. Learn. For, for me, it's a decent place to like start. Maybe get a little inspiration and idea. But from there, like for me at least, it's kind of like training wheels. Right. At some point, you got to learn how to ride a bicycle. Like you can't be a forty-year-old still in training wheels when you have perfectly good health. If yeah. if you have a perfectly uh, operating 
excuse me, operational brain and somewhat intellectual, you should be able to like um, no longer be dependent for a pre-written script. Yeah. That's just me. You just talk to people the way they want to be, the way you yeah. want to be spoken to. They don't, they've heard it all before. That's why the rejection rate, the, the gurus, uh, students fail from gurus because no one taught them sales because they, they think they, they study really hard at all the different methodologies. They do, spend money on marketing. They get the leads and then they get on the phone and they're very uncomfortable and they were not expecting the high rate of rejection. My yeah. job is to teach them how to be comfortable and confident on the phone. Yes. And that way. Million dollar skill, baby. Yep. It, it, it's the most important thing. You see, we all focus on the wrong things. Focus on learning the psychology of persuasion and influence. I've written yes, a book, that's a book. A yes. Book on, this, one, this one, excuse me, is even is an excerpt of this book on my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. That's free yes. for anybody who wants to. You gave to me it. one book. Oh, I wish. It's right there, too. I'm not going to go and get it now. Um, it's these two? I've written a lot the, of books. The Intimidation. Um, intimidation. Oh, which one is it? Uh, winning the Game of Intimidation. Uh, the Mentor Teaches Success. A lot of books. Yeah, that's a good one. a new book now. It's just about done. It's the Rules of the Gut Sales Method. All the different things nice. we talked about tonight. All these different rules with, with the role plays built into this book. Yeah. So you can see how to overcome objections, the Godfather clothes, the uh, you're not allowed to think about it clothes. The, ah, the, the that like takes that. a lot of guts to say that. No, man, you're not going to, no, like you're not going to think about it. Like, you want me to tell you the truth or lie to you, Mrs. Prospect? <laughs> I mean, all these yeah. different rules that have developed. I'm a student of psychology. Yeah. I, mean, I want to know what makes people tick. How do I get people to like me, trust me, mm -hmm. want to do business with me, how to be honest with me and, and not worry about that false face. I want to be their doctor. You go to your doctor, you want to tell her the truth of what's bothering you, what's hurting you. Otherwise you won't get resolution. Right. 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 So, so for folks, you, yeah, for folks watching, like if you really want to know sales and the art of psychology, et cetera, behind sales as well, definitely uh, do your, your due diligence on Claude. Reach out as well. In fact, that phone number is right behind him. So now you have a way oh, to- Oh, is that back there? I didn't know that. It, you didn't know that? Oh, it was right there. Unless it came with the house. I don't know. You know? <laughs> it came with the house. It came with, it came with the house. <laughs> it came with your haircut, right? It came with Vanna White back there. <laughs> <laughs> came with Miss Vanna White. So, yeah, I mean, your, your system, I've actually drawn inspiration from it. And because of that, I feel a lot more free over the phone are there moments where maybe i'll stammer a bit where i'll like be like uh wait a minute wait a minute yeah, <laughs> sure well, yeah everybody has that well, I have you know, those yeah yeah i mean like anything else that's going to take extra experience extra time but yeah check out this system this gut system if you're nervous about sales and you're scared of rejection and you want to have that leathery skin where it just like falls right off you Definitely look this up. Like, I really do mean this. I make no money, even though I wish I did, saying this, but that's fine. All right. So last question for you, Claude, because there's this uh, video call that I need to uh, get on in, in about five minutes. Okay. All right. It's a big question. Okay. If you could be friends with anyone alive or dead, real or fictitious, who would you pick and why? Um, I married her. Oh. I married her. It's my, <laughs> my wife's my best friend, my sweetheart. Oh, boy. He's everything, you know. If it wasn't for this woman with a great name, by the way, Claudia, I'd be cleaning a slurping right. machine somewhere. Oh. She was always, and when we all had those down days, those bad days, she was always, she was always there to tell me, oh you gosh, can do this and that stuff. Was so sweet. Hey. Yeah, I know. I thought he was going to hey, say, I, I thought he was going to say Popeye. I mean, I set <laughs> him up for that. That was a perfect setup. Oh, yeah. That that was was yeah, like that was a Magic Johnson no look pass right there. I didn't know he was going to say that. I'm <laughs> it's going to be a nookie night. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> take it back. Right they take it back. Oh, Ugh, get off me. Ugh. <laughs> and all the Absolutely. people watching. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I would love uh, some people. I would see uh, other people. I'd love to sit with uh, uh, Ch uh, Ch Dr. Cialdini. Um, the uh, the uh, author of Persuasion, uh, uh, Psychology of Persuasion. I'd like to meet um, one of my heroes, Dr. Eric Byrne, the father of transactional analysis, uh, understanding the different behaviors and ego states of people. 
Mm. I, would, I would love to meet. I would love to meet. I'm going to look that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I would love to have met um, um, Steve Jobs. Uh, I've read everything about him. I love that. Yeah. He's such a, he was such a genius and such a crazy person at the same time. Okay. We could talk Most geniuses about, are, I think they say. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you know, we could talk about our president right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> careful. careful. But, um, danger, Will Robinson. Danger, womp, danger. Womp. Um, <laughs> who else would I? Hey, that's do? lost in space for, for those who are like, yes. you know, like under 45 probably and don't get it. <laughs> Robbie, Even though one. I'm 35, I do get it. I, you oh, know, yeah, I love really those. Feel. I love Forbidden Planet, one of the greatest sci-fis in the world. And you can still see the, the little string on the fire flying saucer yeah. right? <laughs> in the old days. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing yeah. is, learn from – I read a lot of biographies. I study other people who have been successful, and they have that, they have that, co- uh, they have that common thread. That Their common thread is that they um, – they just, they, they, no matter what life threw at them, they kept going forward. They kept moving forward. And, 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 and we have to be great at sales. And no matter, we have to have fun in sales too. It's a word I didn't use a lot today. No, I'm but surprised too. We can have so much fun in sales. I talk to people I'm selling. We have fun. You know, I'll tell them, hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Prospect, I know you got to go, but can I do the Godfather clothes on you? Can I make you an offer you can't refuse? There won't be a dead <laughs> hole in your bed. Don't worry. You know, I, uh, they'll say, I need to talk to my wife. Hey, can I talk to my wife first? You know, see if it's okay to sell you. You know, we just have a lot of fun on the phone. And when people laugh and they see the value you're giving them, you can't help but succeed. That's true. Yeah. Oh, man. Finish on that note. Okay. That's it. That was perfect. Yeah. I can't say it. that's a mic drop moment. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad I had a script to work on and we, pre- you and I rehearsed okay. this, this, uh, this podcast for days, didn't we? For days, for weeks, you know, like we had screenwriters, we had a oh, uh, Spielberg thing. review yeah. the, uh, the and, edit. Uh, <laughs> <Pick> up. <laughs> and um, anybody who wants, uh, by the way, my, on my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, I have a free yep. copy of my book. Um, mm-hmm. they can schedule a free 15 minute consultation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, as the, I, I answer my own phone or I try to as yeah. many as I can. Yeah. And I think, you know, that accountability and giving people good value, um, and just being honest and real with them. You can grow up, uh, somebody on a kitchen table can grow a business through a multi-million dollar real estate business. That's very true. Yeah. And yeah, so guys, I mean, feel free to to go over there. Like I know sometimes when people conduct interviews, they don't like plugs because they're hoping they get the shine. I I don't care. No, like really do uh, give your 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 attention to Claude because um, whoever you're learning from, they had to learn from someone else. Yeah. And I'll say freely that when it comes to sales. I think there's two people that have made me feel more comfortable with sales. There's a gentleman named Carl Krenzel out in Arizona and there's you like it really is. Like I just got to say that, like I'm not kissing butt, but yeah, like I feel as if though, if you're not having fun, a bit of a good time, you know, then it's going to feel, it's going to feel like work. Well, how do you want to leave the world when you leave, when you leave this world someday? You want to have the attitude. You don't want to waste a minute. You want to live life, enjoy life. You want freedom. And you want to leave a legacy. Okay? And not go on vacation, but like I love how you say, live one. Yeah. Don't take vacations. Live them. Every day, yeah. every day is a gift. Every day should be joy. You need enough money to have that happen. Focus. Whatever you do. Don't have to buy anything from me or anything like that. It's not about that. But you have to learn that sales is the million-dollar skill. Don't listen to the gurus who are telling you all these – little motivational, sweet stories. You've got to learn how to communicate with people and all the magic will happen. That's, That's very true. Claude, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's not every day that people uh, get to um, interview uh, a uh, non-guru guru with the wonderful head of hair. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> Just got a haircut yesterday. yesterday. There you go. It's growing back. All right. So, I want to thank all viewers for also their uh, lovely attention. Hopefully you take notes, rewatch this, find some kind of aha moments. And if you've heard something where it's like, yeah, I think I know that. Yeah, I heard that before. Question is, are you actually doing it? 
if the question is eh, then you know what you actually got yourself an even better interview but there's some definite takeaways for me in fact i'm gonna have to rewatch this uh tomorrow for sure so <laughs> Claude, thank you again very much thank your uh vanna white that you have out there hey thank you vanna Okay, All you right. owe me, and you owe me a jersey. You owe you owe me an overnight jersey pizza one of these days. Yeah, I gotta get you something from uh, De Lorenzo's or something like that. Uh, yeah, Carmine's yeah, Neck on New Jersey or the Grotto in Opakon, New Jersey. Shout I'm out. not driving that far. You're crazy. Oh man, good. Uh, something about Jersey pizza. It must be the water. Uh, yeah, I think it is the water. <laughs> I say water. I'm more like Central Jersey, closer to. You can't Philly, understand so. us here in California. We say water. Can I have a glass of water? Water. What? Uh, <laughs> water. W a d d d d e r. Thank you, Chris. Good interview. Thanks man. again, Claude. All Bye -bye. right, man. Thank you.